Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac and today we're gonna paint this awesome Revenant model that I 3D printed. What up, Mini Family? When it comes to miniatures, the amount of options owners of 3D printers have is vast. So let's crack the world open with this awesome Revenant sculpt. The first step in printing a 3D model is to set it up in a slicing program. The steps are orienting the mini, adding supports, specifying your exposure times, and how small your layers will be. I'll have a future video all about how to get the most out of your 3D resin printer for printing miniatures very soon. Once you've got it all set up, fire that puppy off. After some minimal cleanup, we got this mini ready to rock on a simple base. When thinking up a paint scheme for this model, it's easy to be inspired by the ring wraiths from Lord of the Rings, but I wanted to take a different approach and also test something. I'm not sure if a forest revenant is a thing, but that's what I wanted to create with my paint. I also wanted to try to stick exclusively to the color green for my entire palette, stretching it as far as it could go. So let's see if it works out. We'll start with a white undercoat and then a base coat of a nice emerald color. I'm not the biggest fan of pure grass green, so mixing a little bit of blue in it to shift it is my preference. I started with white because I wanted this green to be super vibrant. By the way, if you're curious what specific paints I'm using, I'll list them in the description below, but please don't feel the need to go out and buy them. They are not requirements by any means. Once my base coat was nice and opaque, I hit it with a zenith of light from above using white ink. Then, to add some color variety to my undercoat, I shot some lime green ink from below as well. My plan was to have a gradient of dark green to lime to white. Once I had that in a place that I liked, I hit it with some satin varnish to lock in the ink, which can tend to be a little fussy if you don't varnish it or give it time to cure. I then hit it with a green-blue wash to bring definition to the model quickly. Once that was dry, I began to work on the cloth. I mixed a green color that was a little bit lighter than my resulting color on the miniature to start developing some highlights. I think a sign of a novice painter is super dark shadows that are very large, which can often happen when it wash pools in a crevice of a miniature. With my initial layers of highlight, I was pretty aggressive in reducing the size of these areas so I didn't look like a noob. I increased in highlights by mixing in a lime green and a white, painting smaller and smaller layers. Make sure each layer reaches its full opacity. This way, we don't get chalky looking highlights. Next up, I wanted to do a white slash gray color that was tinted green. I started with a greenish gray color and just like the other cloth, I slowly built up highlights, mixing in more and more white until eventually I had something that looked and read as white or bright gray. For white and any bright colors, it's especially important to build up layers slowly. If you go too bright too fast, you'll struggle to get opacity over your previous layer. While I grind away on the white, let me take my today's sponsor. Cast and Play is a group of artists who design 3D models to be printed for tabletop games. Over the last year and a half, they've designed over 150 models covering a wide variety of fantasy topics. They also have a Patreon campaign, wherein for $12.99 a month, you get access to each of their new monthly collections. Each collection contains around 45 different models with things like characters with different poses and weapon possibilities, vehicles, terrains, scatter, and buildings. I see there's a Wood Elf inspired collection available until February 29th that I may or may not be forced to buy. Patrons of Cast and Play also get to vote on what kinds of miniatures are created each month. I just vote for Wood Elves and Vampires every single month. The upcoming collection for March is Demon Hunters, which aren't vampires, but are still pretty cool. If you want to get a sense for what these minis look like printed up, they release two to four free models per collection that you can find on their Gumroad site, along with their previous 3D model releases available for purchase. Viewers of this channel get extra free goodies when they sign up for Cast and Play's Patreon. You only have to be a new member and message them the code MINIAC when you sign up and you get the model that I'm working on right now and all the minis you see on the screen. If that wasn't enough awesome stuff, Cast and Play also has an upcoming Kickstarter for a sound effect manager for RPG games. When the big bad shows up, you gotta be able to properly introduce him. This sound manager makes your sessions more immersive for your players, allowing DMs to trigger specific sound effects based on what's going on. Oh, and you also get digital map tiles, blank item cards, and exclusive limited edition 3D models and delivered physical miniatures to the backers. It'll basically be a complete pack of awesome stuff for RPG players. That Kickstarter will be launching in March. 
You can find all of Cast and Play stuff linked in the description below. Thank you for supporting YouTubers Cast and Play. Now back to the video. Next up in Project Green were the metals. I started with the base coat of my brightest silver. After about 17 centuries of applying a very bright silver to a very dark base coat, I was ready for the next step, which was applying a GW contrast shade, which was a mixture of green and blue. Once that was dry, I was able to start applying highlights, which I also mixed with my contrast paint mixture that I just applied, so everything stayed sufficiently green. I did two layers of metallic highlighting, getting brighter on my second step, but still mixing in that contrast paint. Contrast paint operates similar to ink in that when you mix it into a metallic color, it doesn't entirely kill the shine of it like mixing in an acrylic paint might. Next up, let's do a black green. I wanted the blade to be wicked looking, so I painted it in an all satin black green and began to edge highlight it with a dark green color. I worked my way up to a grass green color with my edge highlights and then a lime green color, and then in very select spots, mixed in white to get a bright lime green. I was inspired by the Knights of Ren from the Star Wars universe with this decision. I love how the edges of their weapons glow red, but the main body is black. This made for a cool effect like there was energy inside the blackened metal bursting out. The very last thing was to paint his lack of a face with a bright neon green. I created a gradient of whatever green was on my palette up to pure white and then applied a lime green ink over it a few times to get the saturation I wanted. Don't be afraid to work back and forth with white paint and more green ink and then more white paint, etc., to get a really punchy bright color. With that, the paint job is complete and it's onto the base. I started with some brown tones that I mixed black and green into to get some forest floor variety. I then added some dry pigments, making sure to dust the bottom of the cloak. I then went to town adding all my favorite kinds of foresty tufts, making sure to get multiple heights of vegetation in there to lend some dimensionality to the piece. And with a nice black base rim, that was the forest revenant complete. I've never painted a model in a monochromatic way, sticking to only one hue. I think in the end, the model seems a little confused. It's hard to differentiate various parts of the model because it's all green. Maybe I needed to mess with the brightnesses of each part in such a way that you could differentiate parts that were near each other. It was definitely an interesting experiment. It was fun to see how far you could stretch just one hue. Have you guys ever done something like this? Let me know in the comment section. Quick announcement before I end the video. John and I are teaching a class in Los Angeles in the Burbank area. It's a two day long class, eight hours each day, super intense. If you want to upgrade your painting skills, check it out, linked in the description below. Thank you for checking out my video, guys. If you like the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways that you can do it, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting projects or your favorite candle scent. Also down in the description are links to a bunch of hobby products that I love to use while painting miniatures. Purchasing those items using those links get me a kickback and no extra cost to you. You can also buy merch like cool t-shirts and miniatures that I produce. All stuff linked in the description below. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... And today we're gonna to paint this awesome Revenant model that I 3D printed. It's too fast? You're, you're so fast. Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac and today we're gonna to paint this awesome Revenant model that I 3D printed. Better? Hi, my <laughs> name is Scott the Miniature Maniac.